Today we're going to be looking at the fetal pig structures that you will need to know for the Biology 142 uh, final lab practical exam. And I'm going to show you several of the structures. I won't be able to show you all of them on this one individual pig. However, you're responsible for knowing the structures listed on the list that's been provided to you in class and online. So let's get started with finding the epiglottis. The epiglottis, you'll have to open the mouth fairly wide and you'll see this little piece of cartilage right here. This little piece of cartilage. When the pig swallows, when we swallow, that cartilage folds down on over the laryngopharynx so that the food goes down into the esophagus and not into the lungs. So that is the epiglottis. And we're going to close his mouth now and take a look at some neck structures. The first thing I want to show you is the larynx. This is the hard, round, large structure here. Uh, that is the voice box. Uh, below that, you'll see the ringed structures. This is the trachea or the windpipe. And this will go down and break into the left and right main bronchi, lower down. Uh, but you can identify it easily by the rings. Just posterior to the trachea, and I'm going to move it over and then try to pinch this little, not that, not this, this is an artery, but this muscular tube right here is the esophagus. Okay, so it's just posterior to, to the trachea. Now, on this pig, uh, we don't have it anymore, but over about this area right here would be a small football-shaped dark structure, and that would be the thyroid gland, and that's no longer present on this, on this pig. The other thing that we don't see on the pig is the, uh, the structure overlying the heart, uh, which is the thymus gland. So keep that in mind that, that a thymus gland would normally be found here uh, overlying the heart and maybe extending into the neck, but that's been dissected away. All right, next we're going to look at the heart and then some of the blood vessels of the neck. So the heart, this is the heart, okay? This is the interventricular septum going down right through here, and that divides the right and the left sides. This is the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Uh, the right ventricle uh, would pump in an adult human or pig would pump the blood into uh, the lungs, the deoxygenate deoxygenated blood, and the left ventricle pumps the blood into the circulatory uh, system throughout the body. The other st structures here, these darker leaf-like structures, are the atria. This is the right, and this is the left. The first great vessel you see uh, anteriorly, this one right here, this is the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary artery, uh, as it's called in the fetal pig. This is going to be uh, in an adult would send blood, uh, deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Just posterior to the pulmonary trunk is the aortic arch. A little harder to see, but it's this structure right in here. That's the aortic arch. There's a few branches off of the arch that we're going to look at. This artery here going into the left arm is called the left subclavian. And in general, on a fetal pig that's been injected, you're going to see arteries as pinkish looking and veins as blue. Okay, so this is the left subclavian artery. You also have coming off of the aortic arch, a little harder to see here, is a brachiocephalic, and that right here, brachiocephalic trunk, and that's going to split into a bicarotid trunk here, which is very small in this pig and a right subclavian artery, which you can see right there. This back carotid trunk will split into the left common carotid and the right common carotid. So these two arteries take blood up to the uh, skull and at the base here, and it's not dissected out, but the common carotid will split here into the internal carotid artery going to the brain and the external carotid artery going to facial structures. So the common carotid comes up and eventually splits into internal and external. The other vessel you see here, this one right here, uh, and because it's been the, the rib cage has been split, it, uh, it comes out in this direction, but this is your internal jugular vein. Three structures 
travel together in the neck here, the internal jugular vein, the common carotid artery, and the vagus nerve. Nerves appear whitish and string-like on dissection. So if we go to the other side of the neck, you should be able to see the, the same structures. This is the common carotid artery, the vagus nerve, and the internal jugular vein. The external jugular vein on this particular pig is out here and it's going to drain facial structures so it comes um, from the more exterior part of the skull, the face, coming down here and you can see it, it has a little string in it because it's been injected with the latex dye. Alright, moving down farther into the thorax we have the lungs. Uh, part of this lung has been resected because I put it down in water to see if it would float. But you have the uh, left lung lobes and the right lung lobes. What you don't see on the heart on this particular pig is a pericardial sac. Um, I see a little remnant of it here. But uh, before it was all dissected off, there was a sac, a membrane covering the whole heart. Moving down farther into the, uh, getting into the abdominal region, we have uh, a diaphragm, which uh, a lot of this diaphragm has been cut away, but the diaphragm would go, come over uh, the liver here, and this is part of it, this tissue here. And the other thing I want to point out on this particular pig is this right here. This is the right phrenic nerve. Um, and it's coming off of C3, 4, and 5. Remember C3, 4, and 5 keep the diaphragm alive. It's coming down to innervate uh, the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is a very important muscle for, for respiration. So moving down farther, um, oh, I do want to point out that you can see a bit of the, the uh, inferior vena cava here. It's, a, it's the large blue uh, structure. And coming down farther, this is the liver. The liver appears blue in some of the pigs because they've been injected and the liver has a lot of venous blood in it, so it appears blue. I'm going to lift the liver up to look at a couple of things here. This little, this little um, uh, structure you have, have here has been cut. It's part of the umbilical vein and it originally came and connected back here to the uh, umbilical cord, but it's been cut so that we could reflect um, the the bladder and the umbilical cord away. So on the underneath the liver you have this greenish sac and this is the gallbladder. The duct coming out of the gallbladder is the cystic duct and other ducts that combine with the cystic duct are the common hepatic duct and it's right around here. They're difficult to distinguish what's what, but the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct will join together to form the common bile duct. Uh, and that's going to go into the duodenum down here. Now this structure I'm holding is this pouch-like structure is the stomach. And I'm going to go ahead and fold it up so you can get a better view of it. But this whole structure here is, is the stomach. The inferior most part of the stomach is called the pylorus and just distal to the pylorus is a sphincter and you can kind of see it's a little bit round here. It's better to feel it because it is a smooth muscle and it is very hard so if you feel it you know for sure that's a sphincter. So it's going to connect the pyloric part of the stomach to the duodenum which is here. That's the first part of the small intestine. Now let's go over to this side a little bit and there's this funny kind of ribbon-like structure kind of attached to the stomach with some mesentery, uh, but this is the spleen, okay? It looks a little bit different in the pig than in uh, humans, but this is, is the spleen. Now I'm going to fold the, the, pull the stomach up some to see if I can find the pancreas. Uh, it's going to be underneath the stomach. And it's gonna, they always say it has a cottage cheese appearance and it, and it does. 
You can see just a tiny bit of it here, and I'll be showing you on a different pig in a little bit more of the pancreas. But it's going to be uh, behind the stomach and have a cottage cheese-like appearance. All right, now let's look at the intestines. In the pig, their intestines are a little different from ours. The small intestine, that's all of these loops right here, these loops of small intestine, and their large intestine is the larger green structure here. They don't have a definite ascending transverse and descending colon like we do. So this is small intestine, this is large intestine. The first part of the small intestine, remember, is the duodenum. So you can, you can say that's the duodenum because it's right next to the pyloric sphincter. The last part of the small intestine, I'm going to see if I can pull it apart a little bit and find it for you. The easiest way to do this is to find the cecum. Ah, here it is. The cecum is this pouch right here. It's a blind pouch. It doesn't go anywhere. In animals, particularly herbivores, it's fairly large because it has enzymes that enable some animals to digest cellulose. We don't have much of a cecum because we can't digest cellulose. But you find, if you find the cecum, it's that pouch right there, and then you'll have to feel for it uh, to find the ileocecal valve. And I'm going to try to find it here quickly. Uh, to be able to show it to you because once we find it that's going to be the the last part of the small intestine and okay here I have felt it it's like like just like the pyloric sphincter it's easier to feel than see so feel around and once you feel kind of something that's a little bit hard it's right in here and if you can trace it back and I know it's hard to see on the camera you'll find the last part of the small intestine, which is the ileum. So this is the ileocecal valve. Okay, now I'm gonna push this out of the way a little bit to show you a couple of other structures. This is the left kidney. Kidneys are retroperitoneal, so you can see it has this membrane over it. The la last part of the um, uh, large intestine here, the rectum is this large green structure. This, and it's very faint because it's also retroperitoneal, is the ureter. Okay, press it. Okay, so here's the kidney, remember, it is retroperitoneal, so it has this membrane over it. Here is the ureter coming out of the kidney, and then uh, here's the rectum, and we're going to go on down here to uh, this structure here. Now originally this was over like like this, but it was cut away and then reflected back. So this is part of the uh, uh, umbilical cord here, and we're going to look on these structures on the interior surface. This one in the midline is the urinary bladder. We call it the urinary bladder because we, there is also a gallbladder. On each side of it there is an umbilical artery. The umbilical arteries carry deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the placenta. It never mixes with maternal blood, but it becomes close enough that there is diffusion of nutrients and gases. So there are two umbilical arteries, one on each side of the urinary bladder. There's the other, and but only one umbilical vein, and that's the one that's been cut that would have connected over here um, at the liver to that structure right there. Okay, so now we're going to look at some of the reproductive organs on this pig, which and this is a male pig. So let's look here. This pig has been dissected out some, so we've taken away the scrotal sac, and we have this grayish looking, brownish grayish looking structure is a testes. The more white, kind of wormy looking structure is the epididymis. That's where sperm is stored for a couple of weeks and they mature. Coming off of the testes is the spermatic cord. That is here. And there's also, you can see, a vas deferens. These are going to go through the inguinal canal. I'm, and that's where I'm putting the probe here and come out the other end. I may not be able to get it all the way through. 
but they're going to come out the other end. You can see the vas deferens coming out here and inserting into the urethra back here. So now I'm going to put this back in this position to show you this is the urethral opening. This is a male and the urethra connects with the penis on the male and I've dissected it out a little bit so you can see it. It's right here, okay? Uh, and you can feel it better than see it, but this is the penis. So on the uh, inferior surface, as, as you would be looking at the pig, there's the penis. And then superiorly, the urinary bladder, okay? So this is all I have to show you on this pig. So on this pig, I have taken out the small and large intestine because I wanted to get back to the retroperitoneum uh, and see better the kidney, the renal artery and renal vein, and some of the other vascular structures. I also wanted to show you this. This is the stomach, okay, and now you can see it a lot better now that the intestines are gone. This is the first part of the small intestine, which is the duodenum, and this round structure here is the pyloric sphincter. So it's pretty prominent here once you've taken out the intestines and you can see it much better. This, this it's, it looks a little bit greenish here, but it has this cottage cheese appearance. It's uh, behind uh, or posterior to the stomach, so that is the pancreas. The spleen, which we saw in the other pig, now this is the left kidney, and what I've done is I've taken away some of the uh, peritoneum so that you can see it a little bit better, and you can see the blood vessels. This is the inferior vena cava. This is the descending aorta. So this is a good spot to see these once you've taken out the intestine, inferior vena cava and descending aorta. So there's two blood vessels uh, related to the kidney here. One is the renal vein and in the pig that's been injected it's going to be blue and it's going to drain blood from the kidney back to the inferior vena cava. The other blood vessel is right here, a little bit more hard to see, uh, but it is the renal artery and you can see that it comes off of the descending aorta. The other structure, prominent structure that comes out of the hilum of the kidney is the ureter and this particular pig has a rather large ureter uh, and it uh, it got transected down here so it doesn't actually connect to the bladder. Uh, this pig has a little bit of greenish stool which be, would be the equivalent of meconium and I think that's all there is to see on this particular pig.